the West Frankish Kingdom, roughly France, was a major producer of wheat, barley, dairy, pork, fruit, and vegetables. France was a grape and wine producer with different regions known for specific grapes and viticulture. Before refrigeration, milk was turned into multiple types of cheese, becoming regional specialties. Grape production started with wild grapes in what is now northern Iran. Fertile crescent vintners perfected their craft. Wine migrated to Greece, then Phoenicians spread production and promoted demand across the Mediterranean. The Romans became premier wine producers and drinkers with some 80 Roman wines according to Pliny. Then the mass appeal of wines with Christianity, turning water into wine, was a Jesus miracle after all. French vintners claimed to be the most sophisticated producers of fine wine, with arguments about excellence across regions. Elites got the best from multiple regions and across the Mediterranean. Master vintners continued to experiment and improve wine production, taste, and alternatives. Monks could be wine masters. Distillation brought opportunities for brandy and cognac. Turning milk into cheese became regional obsessions in France. Milk separates into curds and whey. Taste was based on goat versus cows, the particular breed, where they grazed, and other factors that the French called terroir, like the soil and weather. The curds were turned into cheese with some amount of liquid, the whey, remaining. Soft cheeses like brie have high water content. Hard cheeses like Comte have little moisture with the whey drained away, pressed out, or heated. Legend has it a boy discovered Roquefort when he left his cheese sandwich in a cave to return to a moldy but tasty uh, version. Voila! Camembert and Munster also are beloved French stinky cheeses. No question that elites ate better than peasants, with both urban and rural poor struggling just for subsistence. Poor harvests were common enough that peasant revolts were frequent. With absolute power, French kings ignored the starving masses and raised taxes at will to fund wars and opulence. It mainly came down to bread, white bread for elites, poor quality barley, oat, and millet for the poor. The lack of even bread was the last straw at the start of the French Revolution. Paintings of the Sun King emphasize magnificent royal dress while downplaying his developing portliness. As the greatest in the land, he usually ate alone, surrounded by courtiers, and ate a lot. Soups for starters, pheasant, chicken, mutton and gravy, ham, boiled eggs, salads, pastries, pies, and fruits, oysters, salmon, and sardines on fast days. Even Ripley's, believe it or not, was astounded by his appetite, noting 20 to 30 dishes at the evening meal, including four bowls of soup standard, washed down with wine and, of course, champagne. He was a contemporary of Don Perignon. Outside of Versailles, the Sun King's 25-acre terrace garden was called Portage de Roy, where his gardener was tasked with producing his favorites out of season. Greenhouses were used to produce early peas and his other favorites like asparagus. There were thousands of varieties of wild mushrooms in France. 
French soil scientist Olivier de Serre pioneered mushroom cultivation in the 17th century. Louis XIV was a fan. High cooking in French. The superstar chefs at Versailles and for other French elites dished out the best food, elaborate presentations, which were extraordinarily expensive. Thanks to Gutenberg, French cookbooks documented grand cooking. Escoffier later standardized haute cuisine with Le Guy Culinaire. The royal excesses, high taxes, the bitter third estate, corruption, and inefficiency led to revolution. Perhaps a major surprise was it took three quarters of a century after Louis XIV for it to happen. How it happened in the next video on food history and mystery.